Hey YouTube, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to deploy a VPS to the Vulture Cloud from start to finish, and also how to connect to your VPS from your Mac or Windows machine. But, before we jump on in, I just wanted to quickly mention for those of you who don't already have a Vulture account yet, that you can sign up using my affiliate link in the description, and by doing so, you'll be granted $300 in account credits to try out the platform for 30 days at no cost to you. And uh, at the end of those 30 days, just your unused credits will expire. And also using that link does greatly help out the channel, so I'd appreciate that. Anyways, let's go ahead and get this party started. So once you have your account, head on over to obviously log in first, and then uh, you should hit the dashboard. It'll look like this. And then you could head over to the products page. It doesn't really matter. Uh, for this video, we're simply going to be deploying that VPS. And to do so, we want to hover over the deploy button in the top right and click on deploy new server. There we go. Okay. After doing so, you should be redirected to the deploy new instance page. And uh, since this is a beginner's video and I'm aiming to keep my costs as low as possible, I will be selecting cloud compute shared CPU. Uh, I recommend you do this as well if you are just messing around, trying to learn the platform, learn the cloud, see what a VPS can offer to you. Uh, and what shared CPU means is that basically your server, it'll share resources with other other people uh, using the same server. Sorry, your virtual server <laughs> will share resources with other virtual servers all on the same uh, server. Anyways, now we need to choose the location of our VPS. And so basically this, what this means is where do we want our uh, private server located? What data center? And for beginners, I'll just recommend, you know, the closest data center to you. Um, so yeah, or, or if there's not, you know, a data center in your country, just, just the closest one to you. It doesn't really matter. The only, the only reason we, we try to do this uh, when deploying a server is just to, re just to reduce latency times. You know, if you're physically closer to the data center, in most cases, your uh, latency will be lower than if you were uh, physically further away from the data center. Anyways, uh, now we need to choose the operating system of our server. If you're a complete beginner or if you're advanced, uh, I personally always recommend Ubuntu. Any of the, LT any of the LTS versions are fine. Uh, Vulture only offers LTS in the last three versions. Um, so yeah, I'll just click the latest version, 2404. And what LTS stands for is just long-term support. And that means you won't, you know, you, you won't have to go through the hassle of upgrading your operating system every year or two. Uh, these versions are supported for a pretty long time. And I also, I'm not a fan of Windows Server. Um, it obviously has a purpose. It serves a purpose. Um, so yeah, you, you do have to pay, I think, an extra $16 a month for a license also to deploy a Windows Server. Anyways, uh, staying on topic and keeping our costs low, when we choose the plan of our VPS, which is simply just a way to um, say the specs, the specifications of our VPS, what what uh, what 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 kind of uh, storage does it have, what kind of CPU, memories, yeah, bandwidth, you know, that kind of thing it shows right here. So the cheap options are located under regular cloud compute, and... Uh, the cheapest option they offer is $5 a month, as you can see here, or 7 tenths of a penny per hour. And this server, believe it or not, is actually perfectly fine for hosting a small website, maybe a blog. Um, I'll tell you what, it, it cannot host like a Minecraft server or any kind of game server if that's what you're going for. Anyways, scrolling down, uh, we get to select additional features for our VPS. Auto backups are a, an amazing tool. Um, very, very little work, but the, but they could save your butt if you get into some trouble. Maybe your operating system image corrupts somehow, or you get a critical error, and, and your server has to restart, and all all kinds of things. But for testing and messing around, auto backups aren't needed. Um, I'll only recommend that if you have a system going into production and you have real users. So I will uncheck that. Uh, IPv6 was checked by default, and I'm going to leave that selected just because it's free, and um, why not? It's not going to hurt anything. 
And for this video, that will be everything I select here. Scrolling down a little further, uh, we see server settings, SSH keys. And for this video, I won't be um, setting up an SSH key, but basically, to put it simply, uh, you can use SSH keys to make authenticating and logging into your server just a little bit easier. You won't have to type the password in. Instead, you'll just use public private keys to authenticate with your server. Anyways, lastly, we need to choose the host name, and that's basically just the name of the machine on the machine. Uh, I'll call mine YouTube. And then the server label is just a Vulture web UI reference to, to your server. Um, th this doesn't have any effect on the machine or anything like that. It's just a way to organize your servers within the Vulture control panel. So yeah, that's it for there. And uh, I will click deploy now. Should see you guys back in a few minutes. So it's been a few minutes and uh, now we see that the status of our server is now running. Let's go ahead and click into our new VPS to get some more information. So on this page, uh, you'll see various information like your bandwidth usage, uh, your CPU usage, and your current charges. Uh, you can also look into the usage of your VPS, how it's running. Um, you know, if there's a bottleneck in your server, you could figure out if it's the memory, the disk, uh, the CPU, et cetera. Um, some more settings for the VPS, we can change the host name, things like that, maybe change the operating system, although uh, that doesn't sound like a good idea on a running server. Anyways, you could take a in-memory snapshot of your VPS. We could do, a, uh, we can enable those automated backups here, DDoS protection, et cetera. And uh, I will also note that uh, if you see this message here, like your server's still installing, you can quickly check if that's the case by clicking um, View Console. And if you see a login screen like this uh, in the no VNC client here, then you know your server is absolutely ready to go. You can SSH and do it no problem. But if you do see, uh, you know, text scrolling by, maybe Linux kernel messages or something like that, um, that means your VPS is still installing. And uh, just give it a few more minutes and it should definitely be done by then. Anyways, let's get straight to the point here and connect to our VPS via SSH. Uh, and I'm obviously on a Mac, so I will be using the Mac terminal. Uh, if you're on Windows, I recommend downloading this client here. It's a free SSH client uh, called Putty, putty.org, P-U-T-T-Y. Uh, it's free, and it's a very similar process to what I'm going to show. Very self-explanatory. Anyways, let's go ahead and open up our terminal. And uh, if you've never used the Mac terminal before, it just looks like this. Um, you know, you can type commands into it, and that's pretty much the gist. Anyways, to use SSH, all we have to do is type SSH space the username on our server. In my case, it's root at the IP address. Paste. And the add symbol is just a delimiter between the username and the host name or IP, IP address uh, of your server. And then you can simply type enter or click enter. And then if it's your first time connecting to the server, you should see a message, message like this, at least on Mac, saying that the authenticity of the host isn't known. And that's just because it's your first time connecting um, and it isn't known to your computer. Are you sure you want to connect to this machine? So we can simply type yes and click enter. All right, and now it's asking us for the password. All we have to do is click copy here, paste that here and click enter. And as you can see, we are now connected to our machine. I should also note that um, if you see a password field and it doesn't look like you're typing into it, be assured that uh, you are typing. Uh, on Linux machines, the password field is hidden so it's hidden by default so anything you type into it you won't be able to see um but again be assured that uh, if you if you're typing in that field it's there when you click enter uh, it'll be sent uh so yeah anyways um hopefully by now you've successfully connected to your machine and uh, if you've run into any problems whatsoever please feel free to leave a comment below uh i'll do my best to help you out in the youtube comments 
Um, might be tricky, but I'll do my best. Uh, if you liked the video, please subscribe. And uh, yeah, I guess click that like button.